introducing you, my very good friend, Dr. Peter Hughes, you know, psychologist and, you know, very close friend. 12 years we've known each other. We Pretty met much. We met in the townhouse. The townhouse. On Dean Street. Absolutely. Yes. And I was working at a strip club. Yeah. And I approached you um, to talk about a marketing project for us. Because yeah. we were, yeah, we were looking at the time, about looking at the time actually, about going online. We were doing the new yeah. uh, website for Peter. Uh, Peter Stringfellow and uh, and I was there and we met and then we we formed this friendship very quickly really yeah. I mean we had a lot in common yeah very quickly I've always been encouraged by you to to try to dig deeper and I think that's something where over the last eight years you know of um, of getting sober so sobriety you played a big part in that you know and, and giving me the the tools and the and developing me in a way which was really understanding what I had in my life because uh, I'd lost my way. And I think that, you know, a lot, that happens to a lot of people. And I think that's where the the creativity in me driving that um, that sort of addiction, that addictive personality into my creativity and art was definitely something that was sort of channeled in thinking that, like you said, you know, you can change, you can change what, what you're doing. You can change the person you are. So I think that in a way introduces you, Peter. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it does link really. And, and I remember now that meeting in the, in the townhouse and, and what struck me above all, almost instantly uh, was your energy. I don't think I've ever met anyone with such ferocious and, and prodigious energy. And, uh, and we had a lot in common. You know, we're both interested in psychology. We're both interested in marketing. We're both interested in sales. We're both very practical. Yeah. We both operated in the in the business world. We've both got a strong commercial focus. Mm. We're not up here with the fairies. No. You know, and, and, and I really connected to that. But your energy was and remains very magnetic. And, and, and I think really the, the magnitude of your achievement really is, is the way that you've been able to turn that energy from something that that was at the time quite destructive yes in, into something that is extraordinarily creative yes i mean we were chatting just before we we, we started filming this and and uh, and i said i don't think i i can think of anybody who who has gone on quite the journey that you have gone on and 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 credit to you really because there are plenty of times as we both know where you could have faltered Mm. Yeah, we can all falter. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, life isn't isn't just hard. It's it's extraordinarily difficult, mm. and to keep going when you face question after question, attack after attack, doubt after doubt, I think that is is what distinguishes you: is your ability to keep pushing, yeah. keep going, not quit, and and that's why you're an extraordinarily successful artist because I was reading the other day about a, a report from 2019 on the livelihoods of visual artists. And, and it's, 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 it's astonishing. Uh, the average income of, of an artist in the UK from their art is about six grand a year. Really? Six yeah. grand yeah. a year. That's I have the, read. I've, that's I've the read, average. 66% yeah. of artists earn less than five grand. Mm. And only seven percent of artists earn over twenty grand a year. Yeah, and 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 that's because the focus, understandably, for a lot of artists, is always on create, 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 and they have this mountain of creativity. Yep. But but there's there's nothing there's nothing as common and cheap as talent. No, it, right. it's a hard work and the ability to convert that talent into money and to commercialize it that distinguishes the the few like yourself who become like really leaders in your world, leaders in your market. Mm. I think through this podcast and through the other work that you're doing, I think you'll be an inspiration not just for for artists, but I think for people more generally. Yeah, you know, I and, think there's an every man story here. Uh, it's, it, yeah. it, it is an absolutely every man story. Every person, you know, man, woman, child, who watches this th this program will feel inspired. Who sees your, uh, learns about your story, learns what you go through. I, I, I can remember, you know, how many times was it? I would be out with you for an evening and I'm sitting there with my phone in the one hand, ready to phone the ambulance because I think any minute now, Lincoln is going to die. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just fall literally fall, from a bar, yeah. standing by a bar, yeah. falling flat fall on my over. face. And, and turning mm. that energy, turning that life around. Yeah. And, and the other thing that I think um, also distinguishes you really is your ability to know when you need support. Mm. You know when you don't. Yeah. 
And, 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 you know, when you do, when you're a very forceful character, you'll always forge your own way in life. Mm. Always. You'll always go your own way. But you know when to ask for support and when you need help. And that's why you'll be able to give so much support to other people. Mm. You'll, know, you'll know where the chinks are, you know. You'll know where they can fall. Yeah. And it's your flexibility. Let me tell you a story. I used to run, I might have told you this before, but I used to uh, run a shelter. Uh, this is some years ago. And I worked with a woman who used to live on the street. She lived on the street for donkey's years. She'd been a five pound a shot hooker on the, on the streets. And she was one, one of my colleagues and, and she was also gay. Right. And she was in her early forties and, and she was the most extraordinary looking woman. She was about five foot nothing and had a face like it was punched out of plasticine. But she was immensely charismatic, huge energy. Yeah. Like the closest to you I've ever met, right? And, uh, Thanks. And, uh, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. No, yeah. no, you're but there's a mall to this, Terry. No, I get because, it, I get it. Oh. And she took me one day to meet her girlfriend. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and I met this girlfriend, and she was a tall, young, uh, Californian woman, extraordinarily pretty, who was, um, who was at Oxford University for the year. And they were the most unlikely couple ever. Anyway, whereas for, I'll call her Diane, whereas for Diane, this was uh, the love of her life. This was her anchor. For her girlfriend, I'll call her Elizabeth. Um, and for Elizabeth, it was more, maybe it was, you know, quite not so serious. And she was in, 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 the, in the UK for a year. Anyway, relationship broke up. And towards the end of my time working at a particular shelter, Diane started falling apart a bit. And when she was on the streets in London, she had one goal. One goal when she was drinking, using, being abused. She had one goal. She had a dream of going to America. So she got it in her head. She was going to go to America and ever put everything right. I'm going to go to America, meet Elizabeth. It'll put everything right. She went to America, uh, dream come true, met Elizabeth, relationship fell apart. She came back and killed herself. Mm. And, and there's, there's really important lessons in there, really. Uh, I think the first is if you hang your dreams on one thing mm -hmm. and you're not flexible enough to move, you're not agile enough to move. Yeah. When you reach that thing and it's not quite what you expect it to be, you're going to fold. Yeah. You're going to break. Yeah. You know. And the second thing, she turned that energy against herself in the end. Yeah. All that energy she had. Yeah. I get uh, it. She turned it against herself. Yeah, and, I get it. And and that's the magnitude of what you've achieved. Yeah. You you've been able to take that that impulse to destroy, if you want, that self destructiveness, and you've turned it around. And turn yeah. it around beautifully. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get you. It's a very, it's um, energy. Yeah, and people quit. You know, artists quit. They, they they can't take a knockback. I was I was thinking on the way up here today about J.K. Rowling, obviously being a classic. Well, how often was she rejected? 10, 11, 12 times, right? Mm. And, and do you know what she got for her first book? I think I'm right on this. Two and a half grand. Yeah. Right, two and a half grand for the first Harry Potter book. And I believe it was only taken on because it was the niece or the daughter of the publisher. Yes, it was. Yeah, who that, said, that, well, you yeah, need to take yeah, this a good that's book. that's right, yeah. Is yeah. It? Well, you never make any money. Our children's books, I'll go on, but all right, I'll do it then. And, and you know, one billion pounds later, yeah. you know. And, and, and again, the rest. I know, yeah, I get but it. But she did it. She sat in a cafe with her, uh, her uh, yeah. baby in the pram. Mm -hmm. and, and she wrote, Robert Persick, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. How many rejections did he have, right? About 140, 150 rejections. Mm -hmm. It eventually became, you know, bestseller. And there's some tragic stories. The author of The Confederacy of Dunces couldn't take the criticism of his book and threw himself under a train. His mother later pushed it, I think, some years later, and it became a massive bestseller long after he was dead and won the Pulitzer Prize. Mm. Never quit. Yeah. And, and that's what you embody. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's it's, it's like the, uh, I feel like it's, we said that the podcast has come along at a time where it's there's so many things changing in the world and it's it's so relevant the yeah. the digital platform that's there you know the the biggest middleman is the internet i don't care what yeah. anyone says it just is you can reach 24 hours a day 365 days a year you can send out what whether something you're working on or something you've finished but like you said it's very true I'm not here. I'm not here to, to look at creativity. I'm not here to judge creativity. You can create whatever you want. I will yeah. show you a way to yeah. sell it. Yeah. You know, and that's why I said last week we need to get, you know, Dr. Peter Hughes in because because there is there is a psychology to art. Yeah. And, you know, it's it the psychology to art is understanding that the, the two aspects of, of of selling and creativity are so separate. So you need to have it in your mind very clearly what you're doing. DK always says, um, we were talking about this on another podcast, but it was more to do with looking at where where's your time split? So it, it, he says about me, he says, 
you don't split your time. You're either 100% selling or you're 100% creating. And I think that's where there's a time management in that, where you you do need marketing and sales needs 100% focus. It just does. So you have your time when you do create, but how good are you going to feel? How motivated? Number one, the number one, the number one thing I want to get uh, over is how to sustain motivation. That that for our listeners, for our viewers, they want to be able to sustain motivation. The amount of artists that I get, I showed you some on my Instagram yeah. earlier, you know, comments of, you know, this is just great. What you're talking about is great. It helps me. I watch these videos. These are artists. And I have like a hundred a month coming to me saying to me, you know, I, I tried this, but I want to be able to do that. It's all about motivation. You know, I tried this, it didn't work. I sent out this many emails, it didn't work. And there's statistics of how many emails you need to send out to be able to get a reply, even a reply. Not that yeah. someone's going to say, you know what, I want to yeah. buy something. It might be just one person out of a yeah. hundred, you know, that are going to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested, but send me a brochure. You know, you've got, you know, you've got something. We spoke about this with, an, with another artist that I know uh, who said, um, I just, when I get told no, it really gets me down. I just, I'm just, it really does link. It really just hits me. They say, no, I don't want it. I take it really personally. I look at no as not now. Yeah. Not mm. now. Yeah. Not now. I just, I know when to, when to stop. So when it, when it, when it's looking at going into, you know, a, pros, a prospect, I know when to stop and then I'll go back again. I'll change the pitch slightly. Maybe, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep the, the same sort of rhythm of the communication of the work because I know sort of what they like. But this is why you've got to have flexibility. And it's like you said, mm. if you're too rigid in where your goal is, you haven't got that flexibility yeah. to, you know, to, yeah. to, to evolve. Yeah. You know, and it's going to change. It's like you say, it's, it's all about, you know, when people say, you, if you want to do anything in life, it doesn't matter whether you're going to be a, a, an artist, a, a writer, an entrepreneur, you've got to do two things, three things. Embrace chaos because there's going to be a lot of it around. Lot. Embrace failure and only focus on what you can control. Yeah. And, 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 you know, obviously as a, as a recovering addict, you'll, you'll know that, you know, mm -hmm. you learn to know the difference between what you can control yep. and what you can't. That's right. And, and most people focus too much on what they can't control. Yep. He doesn't like my work. She's rejected me. Therefore I'm a failure. You yep. say, no, okay. That's his judgment. That's her judgment. It ain't mine. I keep going. Because I think it was Dyson who famously said, "I God knows how many tens of thousands or whatever iterations of his of his original uh, uh, invention he went through." He just said, I, "The others just quit before me. There yeah. might have been a few hundred more iterations, yes, and, and they'd have beaten me, yes, but they quit. Yes. They got disheartened. They quit. And and I say it's so important. You know, you, you just never ever quit. And that I know has been your motto. You just don't quit. No, you just don't understand. No." You've, yeah. got, you've got to keep and, going. And, and there's one more point, though. It's really important. You never take it personally either. No. Somebody rejects you. You say, okay, fine. Mm. Move on. That's right. And, and when you take these things personally, they cripple you. Yeah. Because you see it as a judgment on yourself. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, imagine you have a conversation with people, okay? And on the surface, you're discussing whatever you're discussing, a few fact or a belief you've got or a value you hold or whatever. That's not really what the conversation's about. What people actually want in a conversation is to have themselves validated. Mm. They want to be told you're a good, capable, competent person. Yeah. That's what the conversation's really about. Yep. And because people, especially when they're selling here, they don't understand that if that's a level at which you close deals, that's a level at which you sell at, mm. what happens is they get lost in this maze of rejection and they, they can't understand what's happening to them and they can't become resilient, so they get broken by it. But once you know, okay, maybe that's what the conversation is about, but I'm not accepting your judgment. Mm. Fine. I know I'm good. I know I'm competent. And I'm competent and good enough to learn, to know that I have to keep learning. That's mm. another thing about you. Mm. You're always learning. You're always learning. You're like a sponge. You know, yeah. you really are like a sponge. Whatever goes on out there, mm. you absorb it. Yeah. And you'll chuck away what you think is not yeah. useful. And you'll use what's useful. Yeah. And and it, I, I, I want to enhance what I feel is good. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and I, I like to think that I've got the intelligence to know when something yeah. isn't working. Yeah. That's important. And that's yeah. important. That's why people around you as well can sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's to do with if you trying something, you know, if you feel you want to try it, I don't really listen to other people. I sort of say, right, I'm going to do this because I feel it's going to work. Okay. Yeah. Then I, I can sort of work out if it is working or it's not, because I know I'm getting a gain from it. If I get a gain from it, I'll continue doing it. If I'm yeah. not and it's working against me, I drop it. Yeah. And that's something to do with um, helping me 
keep motivated. I know I know that I can do something. If it works, I'll continue doing it. If it doesn't, I'll change it. Yeah. And when you've reached, you know, just to be honest, and it must, there's been times, there must have been times on this journey where you've thought, God, this is hard. Yes. There's hundreds of them, right? Yes. Yeah. And 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 what did you do in those moments? Let's think of you, your bleakest ones, some of the bleakest ones, you know, what kept you moving, you know? What was it? Well, it's, uh, it's that is this is this sheer persistence and yeah. and and optimistic mind I have, you know. I I don't like I I I look at every no as being closer to a yes. Yeah. So so you can only say no to me. All these galleries or yeah. all of these art agents can only say no to me for so long. Someone's going to say, you know, there's going to be a crack in the in their armory somewhere, and I'm going to go ah. I, I, I'll have a look at your work, and that's what happened. That was the first show when I did the show at the Rifle Maker yeah. on Beak Street yeah, in Soho. It. I went in uh, and I spoke to Tot Taylor, and Tot said. Yeah, okay. Well, look, I'm, I've got a, a space in between shows. We'll do something. That was it. Bang, it ignited me because I'd had someone, okay, he didn't say, yes, I'm going to represent you. But he said, yeah, I'll give you some space and you can show some work. And I'd accumulated some money for a few sales that I'd created on the on the works. And I threw it all into that, you yeah. know, hiring that gallery for a weekend. You know, unfortunately, that was the setup for me to be able to start inviting all of my friends from Soho that I'd created, you know, in that time period of me working in the clubs and stuff like that. And they came along and supported me. Some bought some pieces. Some said it looks great. And I was feeling really good. And that gave me the fuel to move on to the next. I remember It's that. always about stages, stages, yeah. every stage. You've got to be able to give it everything you've got. But like I say, you've got to know when it's not working. Otherwise, you know, it, it's, it, that's destructive. Uh, yeah, it is. And I, and I remember that exhibition. Hmm. And, and even then, this was, you know, relatively early. Yeah. And, um, and it, the works were still quite unique. 2013, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the perspective you were putting on it, the hmm. energy in those paintings. Hmm. And, and, and here's the thing about art and, 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 and what gives artists value really is, is, is authenticity. Oh, yep, that's the, authenticity. that's the word. I love using the, that word. The, this is a key word, right? Mm. And, and you, there's plenty of artists who'll go to, they'll go to our college and they'll come from nice, reasonably, relatively stable families and they'll paint something a bit, a bit rock and roll, a bit mm. on the edge. And you look at it and you think, yeah, that's okay, but it's not really authentic. They might make a living out of it. They might make some money out of it. Mm. But, but the authenticity isn't there. No. The journey you have gone on is about as authentic as it gets. So, mm. so when you want to paint... If you want the, the 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 depths of the unconscious, the the creatures that that that, that live in the unconscious mind, what mm. you have to go through, how you have to negotiate and deal with those demons, mm. then that's real. Yeah, that's real. In your case, it's real. It's real. And 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 so when they look, when anybody looks at a, a Lincoln Townley painting, they're looking. Uh, art at its most authentic, and 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 there are there are there are a few artists. Some of the greats, of course, you could say that Van Gogh, for instance. Yeah, ba I mean Bacon, he, Bacon, you know, Francis you know, Bacon. And, I mean, absolutely. And uh, and that's absolutely. what distinguishes them. Mm. It, it's actually real. You know, if you look yeah. at, uh, I was I was uh, only looking the other day at, at, at the, some of the last paintings of Van Gogh painted, and 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 yeah, I think it was wheat fields under thunder clouds, tree trunks and roots, which I was just saying to you a moment ago, yeah. you've got like a, this swall of paint in here somewhere, which reminded me of that, incredibly mm. intense. And of course, what perhaps may have been his last one, which is wheat field with, with crows, mm. where you've got these paths going through a wheat field that kind of go nowhere in these crows, and it's so dark, and only a short time later, he puts a shotgun to his heart, and actually misses. And uh, and shoots himself, then dies a couple of days later, mm. a few days later, you know. Mm. But of course, he was bipolar. He was he 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 had. Uh, I think he also suffered from epilepsy. If I'm right, I'm not sure. But but uh, but his story is extraordinary. And two years before that, he walks into a brothel with a bit of his ear in a package, and gi and gives it to a hooker. That's a man who knows what it's like. Yes, knows what yes. it's like to be what it is that he's painting. Yeah. Uh, and that's what yeah. you are. You know what it is to be what it is that you paint. Yeah. I, and, I, I, and for me, that's it's, what its value is. If I didn't know you and I knew your story, I'd think that that, that work has value. Not yeah, just because I mean, of its technical it has, brilliance, it has, it but has. because I mean, of its backstory. You know, my collectors prove that. And this is yeah. the point about looking at the what, you know, my collectors, a lot of them very successful, have gone through so much pain to get where they are. This is like, this is why I paint, I paint about, um, you know, people, what they put themselves through to succeed. That's what my, that's what the energy is, is my work. When I'm painting, yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the energy that we need to be able to succeed. That's what I'm interested in. I'm fascinated in that. And that's something that has, um, 
that has, that has been talked about many times in, in my shows when I do a show, like I've got this up and coming show at Saatchi, the people that are going to be coming to that. Um, we're going to be talking about these pieces because of most of them, it's the first time they've ever seen them in the flesh. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to be, we're, we're, we're doing the show to sell, you know, we're, yeah. we're, this is what we're doing. I mean, I always look at shows for show, but I think we're running a show every day. In my studio is running a show every day. We're on all social media, okay, all social media. So Audrey in the studio, she does all the social media. She does a fabulous job. We go for it. We sort of, we look at the story. How does the story of our studio go out there? So it might be prints, embellished prints, originals, studies, some Polaroids that we're doing, the whole, the, the, the sort of the factory of what, how I produce everything I do going out every day. You know, we create these brochures. You know, you, you wrote the introduction to the brochure after seeing the work you know uh, we live in the shadow of extinction you know mm. that's how you open this i mean you see in those works they're dark mm. but it's what it's all about mm. it's about looking at that energy mm. and and there's energy in there which which does show that i am a person that knows when something works so i'll give it a hundred percent and once i get my teeth into it you won't yeah. get in a way yeah. and this is this is this is how i see the challenge of marketing and selling and that's why this podcast is giving back it's sharing this it's yeah. sharing this information i think it shares it very quickly as well it's like you know it's condensing a lot of time and and pain and sweat and tears and blood and guts and everything that i've been through to get to where i am with regards to the the whole idea of, you know, your journey, um, which you going back to your story earlier, you know, if you've got that one goal and, yeah. and that, and you don't get to that one goal, it's going to really hurt. Yeah. Okay. This is why the, all the paths are changing all the time. They just are, you need to be flexible. There needs to, you need to be able to be, be manipulated by your life. Your life will, li will lead you somewhere and you've got to work out. You've got to be smart enough to know whether it's working or not. And that's, and that's, that's something that I want to really go into as well about the psychology of motivation. So looking at, you know, what's the, what is it that, that makes us really excited on a Monday? All right. Um, cause I get this. I got, someone said to me last week, um, I sent out, um, uh, some to connect with some people on LinkedIn last Monday. And by Wednesday, I hadn't had anyone yeah. come back to me, you know, and it was like, yeah. Oh, what, what do I do now? And I yeah. said, look, it's about keeping going. I mean, yeah. there is no, they, maybe they're looking yeah. for paragraphs and like the, yeah. Oh, don't worry. You will talk about it in what there's nothing yeah. really to talk about except for to keep yeah. going. Yeah. I've given them as well ideas. I gave, I gave this artist some ideas, what to say, how to introduce yeah. themselves. You know, ask open questions about, you know, how do you see art? You know, how do you feel about collecting art? Something that, you know, that entices the prospect, because that's what they're looking for, isn't it? Yeah. Prospects. In, in when they're out there marketing, they're looking for prospects. Someone to buy their work, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And that that is the best motivation. The best motivation yeah. is when someone goes, yes, yes, of course I want yeah. it. How much is it? <laughs> yes, I'll take it on Monday. Yeah, Pack it for me. Yeah. That's that's like, wow. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. the point. Yeah. And this is but, why this is why I ask you that. And so getting back to the question of this is motivation. Yeah. What, do, what do you think about yeah. it? Well, well, what's interesting about motivation? Again, it, 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 it really comes down to this, and it's particularly Particularly difficult in creative things like writing or or art because what people don't actually understand it's a job yeah it's a job yes it's a job of work yes if, if you sit yeah. down waiting for the muses to descend yeah waiting for you to feel like you're in some kind of you know nirvanic you know creative bubble yeah where right. the godhead has emerged and is connecting to your soul so now you can create you're, you're, you're finished yeah you finish before you even start. Yeah. And, and 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 I go back to the point. First, you've got to see it as a job of work. Mm. It's your job. You do it. You keep going. And when the chips fall, which more times than not, they will. I remember Leonard Cohen famously saying, he said, uh, he said, life got a lot easier for me, he said, when I realized that most of the time I'm, I'm actually going to fail. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Then yes. I thought, okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and I can accept that. Yeah, I love that. And 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 that's motivation. You have to accept that most of the times you're going to fail. Most of the times, people aren't going to do what you want them to do. Almost always, they're not going to do what they want because they've got their own agendas. They want the same recognition, the same emotional sustenance that you also crave. Mm -hmm. So so what you've got to do is focus constantly on doing a job of work. Turning up every day. I remember I was at a, a reading by Philip Pullman, who wrote his Dark Materials. And he says, I don't believe in writer's block, he said. 
I said, oh, that's interesting. He said, so I said, okay, why, why don't you believe in uh, writer's block? Well, he said, it's really interesting. He said, because all I know is I've just encountered like a cul-de-sac or a problem, which I haven't yet overcome. But one thing I know is, he said, the only place I'm going to solve that is sitting at my desk. So I turn up every day. Yeah. I oh, turn that's, up. No, that's number one. Turner. I turn up. That's you number just one. Turn get up. in there. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. And, and you, then, you, then you'll get your way mm-hmm. through it and you'll yep. find a way. Yep. And surprisingly to me, the daemon or demon that, that is such a, a central externalization of the main character's inner, inner psyche, if you want, in his dark materials, was not something he'd created at the start. He'd, he'd gone some way down it and then he thought, oh, now I'll do this. Or back he went and did mm-hmm. it. And yeah. that's the other thing. You just keep going. Sometimes I can see, be it writers or artists, they'll think, oh, that bit isn't right. So I'll work and work and work on that bit. But no, finish the piece. Get something done. Mm. Have a sense of having completed. completed then yeah. then yeah. you can go back and refine it. Mm. It's like the writer always gets stuck on the first paragraph because it's not quite perfect. And here's the key. Never, ever, ever be a perfectionist. If you want to succeed and you are a perfectionist, you will never be good enough and you will fail because the definition of perfectionism is not being good enough. Mm. And, and, and so you just work hard. I mean, there's a two famous psychologists, um, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, they, they did an awful lot of work on, on how human beings make decisions, how they buy stuff, how they make judgments. And, and, uh, and, and, and they said, you know, fundamental, obviously luck plays a large part in it, but you can leverage luck, leverage luck yeah. by working hard Work and hard. just keeping going. Yeah. This is, this is what I'm, this is the thing as well. This other thing about looking at um, these these you know when they you know when people post these yeah, work smart don't work hard work smart yeah you got to work hard yeah. and smart, and smart. you got to work right. very yeah. hard yeah. and be very yeah. smart yeah I've it's, it's crazy it this work I'm- I work smarter <laughs> than I you know it's like what are you talking about no, it's absurd it's ridiculous I know. I know. who made that up I I'd love to know who made that up so- somebody didn't like working and somebody's well, probably very very poor right now yes <laughs> exactly this is the, this is it and that's that's the thing yeah. about yeah. how do you motivate yourself if I'm I'm working so smart yeah but I didn't yeah. send out yeah. those emails every yeah, day that's right. So that's the working hard. It and that's is. when the luck comes in. The luck. It you is. only build your own luck. Huh? You only build your own luck. How many BAFTAs have you done, roughly? Is it four, is it? Four. Well, four years. I'm four on my, years. No, it's it's uh, five years this year, but then we, we haven't been able to do it this year. But I've, you know, so it's, it's been about, I think right. my icons right. collection right. has been about 50, okay. 50 well, paintings. Well, well, you got noticed yeah. because you kept going mm. when people were telling you that mm. your art was worthless. Yep. And then you got noticed and then you end up in Hollywood. That's right. And even when you go there, and I know this, even when you go there, you don't get enamored by it. Yeah. You don't think, this is it. No. Yeah. No, no, this is the On beginning. The grand stage, this is, this the, is beginning. the beginning. This is that's the right. Beginning. This is where it starts. Yes. And uh, and that's done. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like, uh, um, you know, good, great football manager, for instance. Mm. They'll say to their teams at the end of the season, wherever you won this season, finished. Yep. Throw your medals away. Mm. Done. Mm. You that's know, right. And, and you can't go polishing the same bloody medal, no. you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out, until suddenly the medal's gone rusty and you've got no means of replacing it. Yeah. And 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 I think absolutely, you just you do not. I don't know if you remember Philip Petit. He was the guy who who did the they made a documentary on him called Man on Wire. Yeah, he did of course. the, the so Twin Towers. It, yeah, yeah. amazing, that, right? Incredible. And, and he says you must refuse your own success. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. refuse it. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're successful, refuse oh, it. Oh, don't, don't you know? And don't then, let it go to your head. Don't uh, let it go to your head. It's, <laughs> but it's hard not thing. to, isn't it? You imagine the people, remember where you were, right? When yeah. we first met, remember where you were. Mm. Suddenly, you've got Hollywood A-listers coming up to you and saying, Lincoln, you're amazing. Now, now most people would struggle for that not to get to their head. No, yeah, Especially, absolutely. Especially, actually, mm. a people like yourself with a history of addiction. Yeah, that's you right. You know, that could easily oh, yeah. be a catalyst for, you know, uh, for, for a relapse, you know. Totally. I've made it. Oh, yeah. I'm oh. immortal. Oh, yeah. I can't oh, no. be touched anymore. Just one drink. Yeah. Just, you know, and, it, and then, then, you're, then, then you're back to square one. I know. And, and you must refuse your own to That's the second thing about motivation. You work hard and you work smart. You don't allow rejection to overwhelm you. You don't allow success. People forget, like exactly what I said, success to overwhelm you mm. and, and to become, you know, to I don't believe even think that about, you're, Do you know what? I don't even think about that. Right. I don't even, all those things that happened, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and still happening, I don't think about it like yeah. that. I just think it's all part of the journey. It's all, yeah. start, it's all part of the process. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's, you know, these, these are amazing yeah. people, yeah. but they've, they've 
you know, they've gone through it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, absolutely. it's all integral. It's integral to, you know, the CEOs that I know, the big, you know, I say the big businessmen that I know, the big bankers that I know, the big celebrities that I know, they've all gone through this journey. And that's why you know, in, encapsulating that, you know, it's, it's so important for me to have that, the feeling it's like, it's like when I do the icons and I put the name through the face, you know, so yeah. you know, it's one of mine cause I've got the name yeah. through the face, you know, and it's, it's because it's, this is this is like a celebration of them. This yeah. is a, you know they're being celebrated with a Britannia Award from from BAFTA, and I'm I'm creating a portrait of them just that we that that we sell. Yeah, we sell it for 100 percent of that goes into you know an outreach project because I have a Lincoln Townley scholarship in Los Angeles, yeah. and that helps young people in the creative arts. That's it. It's all online. You can read it on the BAFTA website. You know it's uh, it's raised a lot of money for them, and that's 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 part of mine giving back. But what I do say to them is, as I say to these creators, because I go to the school, it's, it's Washington Prep in South Central in Los Angeles. And I go there and I say, you know, I, I'm proud of these portraits and I put their name in it to make to make it, you know, distinctive as my own style and design. But the point being is, is that these people that I'm creating these portraits for all started where you are. I say that to all these people. We we all we all get off the starting blocks, right? One, one runs runs that way. One runs that yeah. way. One may even run backwards. Okay, it doesn't matter. You've got to be able to understand. I'm not going in the right direction. I'm not doing the right thing for myself. I need to change it. And when you start getting the gains, that's when the motivation is flowing. It's 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 this thing about getting to the point where there's a, a barrier comes up. You know, you get to, yeah. and you can't get over it, and you're thinking, yeah. "What do I do?" And it, you've got yeah. to get around it. Yeah. You've got to be thinking like that. Otherwise, you know, it's it's something that I just I'd love to get to the the essence of of to be able to continue to be optimistic. But it's it's very difficult because it's like, yes, I'm I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm very switched on. Yeah. I my pathway is set. Yeah. I know my goal. No, yeah. no, no. Things change, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. They change yeah. all the time. And you change. I train, you change. You change. Exactly. So you, you're you changing yeah. while you're changing yeah. your goal, while you're trying to yeah. get to your goal. Yeah. And then when you nearly get to your goal and the goal's yeah. changed anyway because you want right. something else. That's right. Absolutely so right. So it's all a big journey. You know, yeah. and I, I look at it that we're, we're here for one big ride. You know, yeah. I mean, I've really enjoyed my life. And I love where I am now, and I love to be able to give back on these yeah. on these podcasts. And this is yeah. this is this is fantastic. Yeah. But what it all boils down to, when it really does simmer down, I'm looking in the pan. All I can see is you've got to keep going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, that is the. Yeah. You can you can yeah. dissect it any yeah. way you want. It's all to do with keeping going. That's such a good thing to have in your mind. Yeah. You know, and it, and it, it this this is the is the fundamental in life. Yeah. It's with like with family, yeah. with your career, yeah. anything. Yeah. It's all to do if you need to yeah. keep going. Yeah. You know? and, and I think where you keep going, that's absolutely right. And, and the, what breaks people, and, and this is where we come into really an emotion we haven't really talked about, which is fear, mm. uh, or two really fear and habit. You know, and and but but let, let's let's look at it broadly. You know, that's when a you, good word, fear. Yeah, that's good. Because because the like thing it. with the thing with with people is they get scared. Yeah. Because they look forward and they think, what if what if this doesn't yeah. happen? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? Yep. Well, it might. You know, there's no guarantees in life. You yeah. know, nobody gets a free pass. You can work really hard and you can work smart and you can still end up a poor, but there's no guarantees. No guarantees. There is no guarantees, right? No. But all you can do is stay focused on what you were doing now. And that's mm. the key, mm. really, to be focused on what you were doing now. Mm. So if you're focusing on a, on, a, on a doing a painting, do that painting. Mm. Focus, be there, be present. And then worry about what you're going to do with that painting, how you're going to sell it. If that, that's the, that that comes afterwards. So then, yeah. so then, looking at the focus of being there. So that being there is when you're on the computer, you're posting on Instagram, you're doing all your emails, you're connecting with your prospects, yeah. and most is, yeah. and very importantly as well, connecting with your collectors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, whatever you, you get, get another sale. Get the collectors prospects. have already bought from you. Yeah. Come on, do it again. Get, do it again. Well, well, look, prospects, prospects actually need nurturing. Mm. And, and as you as you know better than anybody, because you do it brilliantly. So so and and now and this is where uh, we come into the your use of technology uh, for marketing. Mm. You know, which is which is absolutely brilliant. You know, every real disruption really. I mean, you're being quite disruptive for the art market yeah. at the moment, and, yeah. and, and and you know as well as for the lives of individual artists. But all disruptions are ultimately technological. 
essentially yeah. technological. So you have the printing. If you look at great when you're printing press, the internet, there's all sorts of disruptions going to come uh, as artificial intelligence uh, increases, as machine learning with blockchain, all these new technologies that they're, they're essentially um, disruptive. And and you, if you want to disrupt an industry and you want to disrupt things and shake things up, you first of all have to look at the technology. These days, you cannot do it without, without having a tech platform. And, and in the last seven to eight years, Alone, there's been about seven to eight thousand new marketing marketing automation platforms or technology platforms of one sort or another, yes. all aimed at one thing, mm -hmm. which is automating the process of customer nurturing. So, a customer, uh, a prospect, or, or or somebody comes to you and says, "I want to buy this," right? And uh, and or that you notice on your website, they're looking at certain pages on your website. These technologies will track that behavior mm. and they will automate emails, which will communicate with that person. They'll yep. send them things they might be interested. We're all familiar with this from Amazon, mm -hmm. and that automates the selling process. We do it. That's and what we do. do. And, we that's do what, and that's what I was going to say. You, mm -hmm. And that is exactly what you do. Yeah, we do it on every platform imaginable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is you've got to, you know, it's, it's, everyone looks at different platforms. Yeah. You want to be able to cover yourself yeah. by looking at every yeah. single person. But, but you've also you know. known. I remember, you know, in your previous life when you were when you were working at the strip club, you'd go down. Or, or, or you'd be hustling with the concierge. Mm -hmm. You'd be going here, there, and everywhere. You, you wouldn't quit. You'd be no. networking with networking, your network. I think networking, networking. way back then. That was footfall. You were way back then, yeah. in spite of all the madness, all mm. the addiction, you still were a LinkedIn super user or whatever. You had a mm. huge amount of followers on mm. LinkedIn mm. and people you were connected to who you would who you would bring into the club. Yeah, that's right. It was, I was, I was in it, the it, midst it was, of all the, the chaos. You were still doing it. This is why when I first started with the art, I was still a foot soldier. I was going out and knocking on doors. You still no, are. No, of course. But there's yeah. still... Um, yeah. I'm <laughs> like always be a foot, like soldier. A foot soldier that sort of <laughs> glides along, yeah. surfs along the digital network. No, but I, but I still do. I mean, I still yeah. would. I'm, yeah. I'm excited by you know, like we we've, yeah. we've started art, eat, repeat, art, eat, repeat. So yeah. we're going to take art yeah. and we're going to put it into a great restaurant. You know, so I'm going to take an artist yeah. who does great work. And I'm going to put it into a restaurant. We're doing yeah. this. We're filming this next week. Yeah. And then we're going to repeat the process. Yeah. So it's art, eat, repeat. Yeah. The restaurant is going to do great food. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, we're just going to get our, we're going to get dirty with it. We're going to yeah, get yeah. down there yeah. Yeah, as the studio, yeah. putting art on the wall, showing the artwork in yeah. a great environment where people yeah. are relaxed. You know, I don't want to go in galleries, Peter. No. I don't want to go in galleries. They bore well, me. I remember. I go when, in, I, I go in, <laughs> like, I go in and I'm looking and the, I feel like they steer me towards someone else they want me to look yeah, at. And I don't even... Oh, oh that's no, even no, if they get up. No, that's no. even if they get yeah. up. They just look at you as if to say, yeah. oh, we don't recognise you as buying art. And I, you I just don't I feel it. I know. And I think that you know, where I started when I had hotels, yeah. while yeah. I was in the Hiltons, I was in four yeah. Hiltons, and I, I, was, uh, you know, I was in the restaurant areas of those places as well. It's relaxed. People are going to a hotel on business or they're, or they're on vacation, whatever they're doing, or they are sitting, having a meal in a restaurant. Yeah. So there's, that, that's, those two platforms are yeah. fabulous. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to, I'm knocking on doors. I'm going, I'm yeah. going, uh, I'm taking a great Manchester artist. Uh, she's wonderful. She does amazing work. Yeah. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to physically go and knock on doors in Manchester and I'm going to talk to the restaurants and hotels. Yeah. And I'm going to say, our studio is going to bring you a great artist who's going to do, who's going to, does yeah. great work with not only originals, but you could sell prints as well. And the best thing about it is, is your customers are going to see that work on the wall. Plus we're going to give you a percentage of when a piece sells. Yeah, great. Right, it's a no-brainer. It's it's just it's bringing it's the it's the it's the joy. It's yeah. the real. It's it's an yeah. energy of creativity yeah. in all aspects. Yeah. Connect, connecting, communication is that. That's yeah. what it's but, about. Yeah, and and, and and I just think that that, that you see, it's, the, the problem with the art world really, and the problem with the way artists look at their work is, it's almost as selling it. Oh, it's rather vulgar. Rather vulgar, darling. Don't talk about you know? the same. Oh, <laughs> yeah. tr I, 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 I know yeah. art, art students that are told, don't, it, do not do even not talk. Do not sell your work. Do not <laughs> even talk about how much something is worth. How dare you? Do not think about the money. The money yeah. will follow. Yeah. Where's the, where's, oh, where's where the money? Is it? I can't see it. Around. There's nothing there. Yeah, that's what I mean. And this is, and, but yeah, but they've I've become, got a bailiff following me, but yeah, no money. Yeah, I can't pay my rent, but it is there somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's what it is. And, and, and fair yeah. play to a lot of the people that I know, yeah. a lot of the students I know, they've got, they've got another job. Yeah. So they work somewhere. They do some yeah. like bar work, whatever they do. Right. And they're focused on their creativity, yeah. you know, doing, doing yeah. their, their studies. Yeah. But I say to them, sell what you're creating. 
yeah. do something yeah. back at your yeah. your your yeah. your your digs. You know yeah. what I mean? Create something you can put out there. Yeah. And this is where it's 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 like this is why we want to be able to communicate every yeah. single minute of the day. Yeah. So a lot of the students that I'm talking to now have got good profiles. Some have yeah. got some amazing followers because yeah, they, yeah. they do their processes as well. Yeah. People love processes. Yeah. So with artists, if you do your, show your processes that you do, you know, it's, yeah. it's, like, you know, it's like watching paint dry, literally. Yeah, yeah. But it, it gets people viewing you. The other thing about social media is, is that I always say as well, it's not to do with quantity, it's quality. Yeah. They absolutely. always say, well, I haven't got many followers. Doesn't matter. Yeah. If you had a hundred followers following yeah. you that all bought from you, yeah. how would you feel? Yeah. Right. That's a hundred followers. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I haven't got thousands of followers. You don't want thousands of followers. Yeah, yeah. You want someone going, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah. But they never buy from you. Yeah. It's not my game. It's yeah. not my bag. Yeah. I don't, that, that's yeah. not really me. Yeah. I want it to be that people want to buy into my journey, buy into the artist. I yeah. always say that yeah. I, I, art collectors yeah. buy artists, not art. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I always focus heavily on my collectors because they've already bought from me. Yeah. I mean, it's like, hello, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of yeah. course I'm going to go back to them again because they've already bought from me. Yeah. They've already yeah. paid money. But also, like you said, they've not just bought into the art, they've bought into you. And that's why yeah. we're talking now. And one thing about you is never, and you never will, you'll never stop being a foot soldier. I remember an early, a very early series of The Apprentice. I can remember Alan Sugar was driven around, his driver driving around, they were filming in the back of his car. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I asked him, what if, he said, and Alan Sugar said, well, yeah, I'm a, partly I'm a bit envious of these young youngsters, he said, because yeah. they're starting out. Yeah, you know, I, I was there once. No, I get it. And then he turned to the camera and he said, and do you know what he said? But if everything fell apart, I'd do it all again. Yes. And you know he would. You know he would. Uh, and that's you. Yeah. Exactly the exactly. same energy. Because exactly. you never stop. If you're going to succeed, you never stop. You don't go with a pomp and circumstance. You never stop being a foot soldier. No, and no. You never stop selling, uh, you, you, never stop closing, never stop moving. I think that's something that it's, it's, it's sort of, it can be, it can be hammered into you. It, it really can. I mean, it yeah. was hammered into me in, in, in vehicle sales. You know, if I, if yeah. I hadn't, a, yeah. if I hadn't a got off my ass, you know, my, my sales director, John Collins, who's a very good friend of mine, he used to come into my depot and say yeah. to me, what are you doing in here? Why yeah. are you in here? Yeah. Because there's no one in here who's going to hire a van. So get out of yeah. here. Yeah. You know, and that was, that was, yeah. ni I was 19, yeah. you know, um, um, so it's, that's a long time ago, but my point being is it still hasn't changed. No. I know when I'm in that studio yeah. and I'm not communicating and I do use digital to communicate with a lot of people, always yeah. use technology, but I'm, I want to be in there and st I'm still connecting. So I'm still yeah. getting out there. I just yeah. happen to be getting out there yeah. digitally, yeah. but I still, I would, I'd love, I'd love to go back. I'd love yeah. to go back because I know I do things different. And that's, and that's another thing about what I'm sharing here. People will find things. They'll go, actually, you know what? Lincoln's successful. It didn't work for him. I'm going to use what I'm going to use the methods he used yeah. because I can see it working. Yeah. And that's why every, Every episode, I want it to be that I bring something new. Yeah. And that's why, you know, looking at the psychology of art and selling, yeah. you know, art yeah. is, is very interesting for these yeah. people because it's it's to do with perseverance. It is. And, oh, it's to do with, and, 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 and what's interesting you see, and this is where we come down to the idea of being resilient. I mean, I've, uh, as you know, I've helped a lot of people pull their lives together in one Absolutely. way, shape or form and Absolutely. help drive them forward. And, and what I always say is never look back, never look back no. in anger, never look back no. with bitterness in your heart no. and say, if he hadn't done that, if she hadn't done this, then my life would be better. Or it's his fault. It's her fault. And, and there's so much of that going on, mm. you know, where people look back and they'll blame. Mm. And sometimes with good cause. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. with you. Mm. You know, you mm. can blame all you want, but you either, you either want to leave that in the past and move on with your life or want to carry these people with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember you saying, I ring Peter. Uh, early, uh, early on, I remember you said, look, you said, Peter, I'm either going to make a success of this, you said, or I'm going to die trying. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. and, and, oh, and that, that's just beautiful. I mean, mm. that, that is how you succeed. And, yeah. and, and if you remember, we were talking about this book on grit, weren't we? Yeah. Um, and, it, and there's a quote from Will Smith yeah. in there where he says, you know, you may, be, you may be sexier than me, tall, I'm more handsome, whatever it is, he says. But if you and me get on the treadmill, yeah, either you're going to die or I'm going <laughs> to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the other way around. Or the other way around. Exactly. Whatever, yeah. no, but you it. can't, you cannot. You mm. cannot beat me for effort and perseverance. No. I will go until yeah. you know it's oh, it, it, oh, until yeah. I can't go any yeah. further. The, and, I, and, that's and, and a very that's very good word. I think if yeah. I ever have a tattoo, yeah, probably won't have it on my forehead, but I'm going to yeah. put grit. 
Yeah. That's what I'm going to have the yeah, word grit. Yeah. That's a great yeah. word. That, yeah, is. that is the best word that's come out of this podcast. Yeah, it is. And and, and that's what you need. Yeah. You know, and, and we've we've known people. I mean, you've 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 worked in in uh, you've known a lot of addicts, so have I. And and you look at addicts and you, you think they're just making headway with yeah. their life, you know? Yeah. And then they go back into it and mm-hmm. back into it, mm-hmm. back into it. And they have to be, as you do, you have to be constantly vigilant. Mm-hmm. But the best way to get out of that is to own it. Mm-hmm. It's nobody's fault. No. What you were is nobody's fault. No. And what you are is nobody's responsibility. Yep. Sure, you've had help from people. Obviously, I'm one of them. But you've done it. Yeah. You were the one. You're the one who puts the brush in your hand on days where you really don't feel like putting the brush in your hand. Yeah. You're and the one who keeps going. People and communicating, doing all this and work, doing all and getting doing all this work and communicating. Doing this out, and people Instagram. Go, no, I don't Twitter. want any more Lincoln. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. not doing. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah. Right. And that's it. And you don't understand the meaning of the word "not enough." You know, no, you're, well, you're always that, yeah. That, that's that's another. That's for another day. <laughs> yeah, you just keep going, and but it's energizing, you mm, know. And, it is. And 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 if 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 during this podcast and in the artists you're working with, if they can pick up one lesson, just keep going. Don't look back. Don't blame. Yeah. Face forward. Yep. Be present with grit, what you do. Grit. Grit. And great just word. Keep, keep write keep the going. word grit in your studio. Yeah. Absolutely. Write the word grit yeah. on yeah. your yeah. fridge. Absolutely. Every day. Understand yeah. you need yeah. grit. That's good, right. good word. I'm glad I, you brought that up. And you'll and you'll get knocked down. You'll get knocked yep. down yep. a thousand times, yep. you know. Yep. And get and, up. and and you just get up. Hmm. And you just get up and you get knocked down again. You get up. And, yeah. And uh and, and the day you stop doing that, okay, then you quit. Yeah. You know, and and but like you said, you know, hard work is part of it. You've also got to work smart. You've got to have strategies for how you're going to take your work to market. You've got to be flexible and adaptable. Famously, Darwin said it's not you know the, the strongest who survive. It's also almost flexible in their behaviour because mm. they have more behavioural choices. Yes, you've got to give yourself choices in life. Very Don't true. narrow your choices. That's great. Yeah, very true. Great. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah, it's been great. Well, you've right. got to come back. Yeah. We've got a lot more to talk about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that was uh, that was amazing, and uh, yeah, I love you, man. Cheers. Yeah, good one.